For more physics related videos, please subscribe. In today's physics problem, we will go over the first ever measurement of the circumference of the Earth. I've rated the physics level in this video as easiest. This experiment was first done by a Greek named Eratosthenes, who was from the city of Cyrene, which I believe is pronounced something like Kurene in Greek, and is located in present-day Libya, but at the time was part of Ptolemaic Egypt. So we call him Greek, but I guess he could just as well be called Egyptian or Libyan. I'll let you decide which nationality best suits him. Anyhow, how did Eratosthenes measure the circumference of the Earth? Well, he knew that in the city of Sieni, which is the modern city of Aswan in Upper Egypt, on the summer solstice, the noontime sun was straight overhead, meaning that if you put a stick in the ground vertically, it would cast no shadow. However, back in Alexandria, where he lived, on the same day, the noontime sun was not straight overhead, and so a vertical stick in the ground would cast a shadow. Let's draw a little cartoon to make sure we all understand what we're talking about here. In Sieni, if this is the ground, and we have a vertical stick, at noon on the summer solstice, the sun is straight overhead, and so its rays are parallel to the stick, and so no shadow is cast. In Alexandria, on the same day at noon, the sun is not straight overhead, and so its rays come in at some funny angle, which we're going to call theta, and as a result, a shadow is cast on the ground. Eratosthenes says, look, if the Earth is round and the sun's rays are coming in from this direction, at noon on the summer solstice, it must be the case that Sieni is located right here, at the closest point to the sun, such that the stick points straight out in the same direction as the sun's rays. Alexandria is further north, so the stick points off in a different direction, and so the sun's rays come in at an angle theta relative to the stick. And so we have a shadow. He then notices that because the sticks are perpendicular to the ground, they're simply extensions of radii, and the angle between the two radii is just the change in latitude between the two cities. Having studied his geometry, he realizes that since the sun's rays are parallel to the radius going to Sieni, and the stick is parallel to the radius going to Alexandria, then the change in latitude must be equal to the angle theta that the sun's rays make with the stick. He then says, if we know the distance from Sieni to Alexandria, which we're going to call S here, that's just an arc length on a circle, and it must be equal to the radius times the angle theta. This is just by definition of an angle, as long as you're measuring in radians, not degrees. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and so we can replace r by the circumference divided by 2 pi, and then solve for the circumference to find that it must be equal to 2 pi s divided by theta. Now all we have to do is measure theta and s. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe, and consider sharing it with a few friends. There's a few assumptions that have been made here, so let's go over them. The first assumption is that the Earth is a sphere. In reality, this business of the sun's rays coming in at one angle in one place and a different angle in another place doesn't actually imply the Earth is a sphere, it just means it's not flat. The second assumption is that Sieni lies on the Tropic of Cancer. This is because we're saying that on the summer solstice, the noontime sun is straight overhead in Sieni, which is in fact how the Tropic of Cancer is defined. That is, the Tropic of Cancer is the latitude at which the noontime sun is straight overhead on the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. The third assumption he makes is that Sieni is due south of Alexandria. This needs to be true because if the cities lie east-west of one another, that doesn't have any effect on the angle at which the sun's rays come in. Only the north-south direction is important for this. So let's see how good these assumptions are. Well, the first one, the Earth is a sphere, is, that's a pretty good assumption. Technically not exactly a sphere, but it's pretty close. How about the second assumption? Does see any lie on the Tropic of Cancer? Almost. The Tropic of Cancer, it turns out, is right about here, a little bit south of Sieni. But it's pretty close. Is Sieni due south of Alexandria? Not quite. It's a little bit east. And since we only care about the north-south distance between the two cities, this means that if you measure the distance between Alexandria and Sieni, it's going to be a little too long, and you're going to overestimate the size of the Earth. Luckily, though, the error in the placement of the Tropic of Cancer actually results in an underestimate of the size of the Earth, and so these two errors tend to cancel one another out rather than add up. But this brings up another question. 
How do you actually measure the distance between Siena and Alexandria? Well, it turns out that at the time, the Ptolemaic government was in the habit of measuring distances from various places for land surveying purposes. And so there was an entire profession of people who went around measuring the distances from one place to another by counting their steps. So either this distance had already been measured by the government, so it was known, or Eratosthenes simply paid one of these guys to measure this distance. But there's another problem here. What we want for this experiment is the distance as the crow flies, not on land. So if you have hills and valleys that you either have to walk around or over, this is adding to the distance. Thankfully, Egypt is a pretty flat country, and especially if you're walking near the Nile, as the Saharan image of giant sand dunes doesn't start till further west closer to Libya. But then again, if you're walking along the Nile, even though it runs pretty much south to north, it still is a river and winds around a bit, and so you're going to measure a distance that's a little too long. But if there's a place where the distance on land is pretty close to the distance as the crow flies, Egypt would be that place. So Eratosthenes carries out this experiment and measures the angle theta to be 1 50th of a circle, and the distance s between the two cities to be 5,000 stadia. A stadion was the standard unit of measurement at the time, and it is apparently equivalent to 157.5 meters. But this conversion is debated among historians, and it could be anywhere between 157 to 209 meters. Nevertheless, using these values, Eratosthenes finds the circumference of the Earth to be 250,000 stadia, which is a little over 39,000 kilometers, using the 157.5 meters per stadia conversion. Modern measurements of the Earth's circumference, if you go around the poles, is a little over 40,000 kilometers. So using this method, he was only off by about 1.6%. By the way, if you use the 209 meters per stadium instead, then he's off by about 30%. So, you know, food for thought. A similar experiment was later carried out by a man named Poseidonius, who noticed that in Rhodes, which is an island in the Mediterranean located here, on a certain day, there was a star that barely popped up over the horizon. But on the same day, back in Alexandria, the same star rose higher up over the horizon. And now you can play the same game as before and equate the change in angle to a change in latitude, and all you got to do is measure the distance between the two cities. In this experiment, Poseidonius also found the circumference of the Earth to be about 39,000 stadia. But there's a problem here. I'm willing to believe that it was possible to accurately measure the distance from Sieni to Alexandria by counting your steps, but in this case the distance you have to measure is over water, and I just don't see how this can be done if on land you're doing it by counting steps. What are you counting over water? I tried to find information on how this distance was measured, but I couldn't find any. If any of you know how this was done, or if you have any idea on how it could have been done around the year 100 BC, please let me know in the comments. Hundreds of years later, the Caliph al-Mamun is said to have repeated Eratosthenes' experiment by laying down rope in order to measure the distance that corresponded to one degree in latitude change. This means he would have had to lay down rope over a flat expanse for a distance of about 60 miles or 110 kilometers. So as we can see, Eratosthenes' method became the standard way of measuring the size of the Earth, despite this problem of whether or not you could accurately measure the distance as the crow flies from one place to another. That is, until a new method was devised by Al Biruni, and this will be the subject of my next physics video. If you'd like to see this video, hit the notification bell to be notified when it's released, as well as other future physics related videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.